Did you do any other jobs outside of your, your job now, out, outside of school, like a paper boy or anything like that, or not really? Um, what did I do? I, I would honestly finish school back when I was younger. Mum mm. would drop me off to, to work with Dad. Yeah. So I'd go and help and, you know, do labour work with Dad. Mm. And, uh, you know, I learnt a lot on about working on cars and, and uh, a, a lot of experience there. So, you know, which is what has helped me to have that knowledge still today. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I... I've done a few work experiences here and there in IT and stuff. Mm. Um, but yeah, mostly always been working in the family business. Go, go, go! Can you do it? He's in! That's a massive crash! And it's happened immediately! This is amazing! A big shot, big shot! And it's lights out and away we go! How did the Jack Hill? That's why I got confused. How did the Jack Hillman? Yeah, like well, you got to tell the story of that because everyone thinks Ella Jardin. Do you know yeah, I mean? so uh, Dad used to work for Hillman's brothers. They were two German brothers, I believe, and yeah. um, and he used to work for them. Mm. And obviously, they came to uh, you know finish up one day, and and Dad's taken over, mm. and um, and he obviously I don't. He's kept the name Hillemans and, um, yeah, he's, he's called it Jack Hillemans. Yeah. And, yeah, he's been running the business over 40 years now and grown it to what it is today. Yeah. Is it – I can't remember how big – is it as big as the other ones in our town? Like, or do you – are you kind of like like a squared – do you know what I mean? Because there's those big Subaru ones. How big is your one? Because our town's well, quite well, big. Well, we are we're a, we are a Subaru repairer, bad yeah. repairer. So, um, you know, we do we do a fair amount of work. Yeah. So we are a decent sized workshop, I would say. We're one of the bigger ones. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, yeah. So we've been around for a long time too. So we need to grow, I guess, and um, and yeah, we need to try and accommodate the amount of cars that get damaged, yeah. which is a lot these days. Yeah. 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 And you, you obviously were racing Subarus as well in your production car days, weren't you? Yeah, yeah. That's you know, I would probably say um, Subaru has helped us in many ways. Yeah. Within motor racing, with business and everything. So, um, it was a Scuderia Veloci Motors. Yeah. Who Dad was friends with, very close friends with Bob Atkins back in the day. Yeah. Which when I did compete in the Subaru Liberty, um, that was in memory of him because Bob helped us out. Um, you know, with getting the car and and getting us sponsorship to run the car and so on. Mm. So, um, yeah, Bob Bob later got sick with cancer and passed, so we raced in memory for, for Bob, and we won the championship, which was a great feeling. Mm. Was that – wait, what were your numbers in karts? It was 20 – was it 27 then, 43? In in karting? Yeah. I had 71. 71, that's right. Yeah, yeah. And, and I think I had 27 as well. Yeah. And nine. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. Yeah, I'm trying to think of all the numbers. Cause yeah. You go through the eight, like I've gone through my own numbers, but yeah, yeah, you go through the stages and then and then the 43, was that due to Bob? I'm trying to piece no, it No, 43 I think was just the number that, because I think the other numbers that I did want weren't available. Yeah. So someone else had that number, so I couldn't take that same number on. Yeah. So unfortunately we had to, I think we were left with 43. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So there was no meaning behind that number, no. Yeah. I've got to get into a hot take here though. Like obviously we we're talking about the, like, um, like how different our era is to the modern era of racing, how we've got like, you know, we had the, obviously the older guys racing and whatnot, and then the younger guys and all sorts of things. But back when Supercars, when you were racing, you had 45 guys on, 45 cars on the grid. And yes. yeah, now you have like, mate, they barely make 15. Yeah, yeah. And, and you were saying, I, yeah, you were saying yeah. the pro car community, how it was tight, there was big cars, but now they're just struggling because it's so monetized and commercial. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? You're definitely right there. There's a shitload of cars back in the day. Yeah. And, you know, it was always panel beating. Yeah, <laughs> which is where Jack Hillemans <laughs> came to to aid. Yeah, and um, no, nah, it was is crazy. And and you look at it now, and and yes, the number numbers are lacking. Yeah. Um. But look, I, I guess it, it is an expensive sport, and you know, you you want to see more people on the grid. You want to see more action. Um. You know, just like like it was back in the day. Mm. Um. Yeah, it was so memorable. Um. In terms of how many cars there were on the grid. Mm. But, um, yeah, unfortunately, it's not the case today. No, no. And there's so much, yeah, and it's 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 just different because you've got, you know, 20 guys and, and also they have the, the grid numbers too, like a rec system on each in each grid number where before you could just literally use yourself, buy a privateer team and come on the grid and yeah. you could just race. Yeah, no, it's, um, it's, um, it's, like, it's crazy. It's crazy how much has changed. Yeah. It's yeah. dramatic. Yeah. What do you think of the whole TCR series though? We're talking about the ProCar stuff. The, the the TCR 
do you, do you like the TCIS 5000 thing or do you just, do you just think it's not? Look, I haven't been to an event. Yeah. Um, I think there is potential there for sure. Uh, I, I am going, I believe, next month in Bathurst, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bathurst International. Yeah. yeah so yeah. I'll, I'll be going to watch. Um, so I'm, I'm pretty close um, with a, a friend of mine who, who runs a, a Burson fran- franchise. Yeah, okay. And I think uh, Bargwana is one of the drivers. Yeah, Ben Bargwana, yeah. Jason's son. Yeah. yeah. So, um, yeah, so we've got some tickets to go and – and suss it out, so we'll make a trip of it. And you know, I think they're cool cars. Look, I go, I date it back, or you compare it to the British touring cars back in the day. Yeah, you know, if you can get it, you know, tight tight knit racing like that, mm. I think you'll have good competition, good entertainment. It'll be good value. Yeah. So um, yeah, I'll, I'll check it out in a month's time. At, yeah. You know, when I head out to the event, Bathurst again. Yeah. After all these years not having having gone and going twice in a month, pretty much. Yeah. So. Um, yeah, I look forward to it, but I think I think there is good potential there. Yeah, what encouraged you to get like? Obviously, you said you've been hibernating and doing your own thing for like ten years to go to just go. Oh fuck it, I'll just go to Bathurst two years in a row. Do I don't know. know. I, mean? I guess I guess settling outside of the motorsport life. Um, you know, having a family now, three kids in. Yeah. Um, lack of sleep. Yeah. Um, you know, all of the above, but I think it's trying to experience that with my boy. Yeah. You know, like dad did for me. So, you know, I, I have those memories with dad going out to Oran Park, watching the truck racing, the bike racing, whatever it was. Mm. And, um, you know, having that experience and, and um, doing it with my boy would, would be one of the best assets to me. Yeah. So, you know, I think that's why I've settled now a bit mm. and I can try and find that time to go and do these things. Yeah. I've got to ask for myself because Brooke's seeing this transition with me, tin top and open wheel. What was your preferred car? Did you like the tin top racing or did you prefer the open wheel or the Formula 3? You know, I I, I, I just, I can't compare them yeah. because it's they, they are different from one another. Yeah. So with with open wheel racing, it was a different ball game as a, and, and same with um, tin top racing. Yeah. It's you can't compare it. I don't know how you can draw the line and go, you know, I I like this more. I like that more. I like a good competition. You know, yeah. in I loved Formula Three. Um, that was awesome. You know, it was mm. a good good um, a good crew of people in 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 that category at that time. Mm. And um, you know, I had some close racing there. Yeah, as well as the Mini Challenge Series. I think yeah. one of the most um, underrated. Most, yeah, it is one of the most underrated and. One of the most challenging categories I've ever competed in. It was much like karting, right? It's, yeah, right. It's just like you know, neck and neck racing. It's mm. it's so close. It's it's like a big go kart, really. Yeah. Um. So I, I really enjoyed that. Mm. Um. Yeah, that was pretty can you, cool. Can you touch on more of your time then in the mini challenge then? Because obviously I only got to see glimpses of it. Yeah. Because yeah. I was I just was, I don't know what I was doing at the time, but I remember seeing it at the AGP when you were winning there and doing all that, but. That as you said, it was like an underrated category, which is now kind of like the Toyota eighty six series. Do you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, yeah, correct. I mean, look, there's there's a few Toyota eighty sixes around, isn't there? Yeah. So, um, you know, the minis were just like real, real good fun. Like, it was so competitive. Um, I mean, if you ended up winning the race as well, you get your ballast. Yeah. I think it was fifty kilos for for first place. Yeah. And twenty five, and then fifteen kilos for second and third. So uh, it, it was such close racing and it was just pure racing. Mm. That's what I loved about it, you know. Um, it, it came down to just set up mm. um, and everyone was, was with an equal car. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's right because it's like Carrera Cup and 286. Yeah, you just yeah. had to work on the car constantly and yeah. the ballast thing. And that's right, you'd get bop. Well, that's what it's called now essentially. Yeah, you yeah. get bop so you'd, you know, compare cars and all that type of thing. I remember that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So is. You know that weight really would would affect you, um, but now I just I, I carry that factory fitted, mm. um, <laughs> being being a dad now. Yeah. So um, yeah, so I probably wouldn't need any ballast. Yeah. What's it like being a dad though now? Like you you're comparing different lives essentially. You're like a now full time dad and yeah, you know, a family and a businessman. Yeah. To compare to your race days, do you? St- do you still get enjoyment out of watching cars? Or you just like the dad life and watching it. Do you know what I mean? No, look, I, I definitely do get the enjoyment. I, I feel like if I do put my bum in a race car again, mm. I don't think anything would have changed. Yeah. Um. So I, th- I think that competition side of me is just in my mind. Um. I'm, I've always got that. That'll never go. So I, I'm a competitive person in general in life, mm. and I think a lot of family and friends would agree with that. 
Um, but you know, it's um, it's 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 hard to kind of you know move away from motor racing. It's it's um, it's it's kind of upsetting because you've been there for so long. It's such a roller coaster. You get so many mixed emotions. Uh, you meet so many interesting people. Um, yeah, so it, it hits you in certain ways. Yeah, but um, yeah, I love I love motor racing. It's it's always going to be part of me. Yeah, yeah. And I've got to ask, just from a personal point of view, and Brooke's seen it many, many times. You kind of get stuck in this like loop where you don't want to leave, but you wanted to leave and do. Do you know what I mean? Like, how did you kind of go? You know what? I've had enough. Yeah. Like you could have continued on technically at a state yeah, level or yeah. something like. But when did you, when did you think? You know what? Hey, it's time to give it up and look towards a new direction. Um, just for like my own advice and even yeah. for people listening who might be stuck in a loop doing the same thing on yeah, and yeah. on and on. You know Look, I, mean? I, I could have carried on. Um, I, I still can today. Mm. I think uh, I've got a lot of focus. Like I said, I'm, I'm competitive in, in, my, in, 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 you know, in my mind, right, yeah, in yeah, myself. Yeah. So whatever I do, I want to succeed in. So yeah. I, I look at business, I look at family business and I want to put a lot of my, my concentration and, and my effort in that. Mm. to to succeed so it, motorsport at that time in my life where i thought you know what I, I it's not that i can't get any more out of myself as a driver i've got to put my my head down and concentrate on what's going to be uh giving me back more yeah. in the short term or in the long term i should say so i i thought you know uh putting my efforts into the family business would would help me and and everyone around me mm. Mm. and then obviously you're saying your son is also very keen on racing, but would you actually get him involved in karts? Are you just going to like lead it, leave it to the sim, and then see what happens? Look, I, I think he will always want to do my head into to um you know to get in, involved in karting and so on. Yeah, but you know I'll give him an opportunity. Why not? You know, it's, yeah, he's got to learn racecraft in you know in a go kart. Um, you know, just he's got to do it because one day he's going to be driving a car. Mm. Um, and whether it be his L's or whatever it is, you know, you want what's best for him. Um, yeah, so you just got to kind of lead him in the right path. Yeah. If, if he, I can't push him to do what I want, mm. I'll allow him to kind of find his, his, his ground and, um, take his own steps. I think. Yeah. I was, I was just saying, or oh, I've said to many people with the closure of Wakefield park happening. Yeah. Um, and you were saying with your son, it creates this, where do the, where do kids get to, to drive and if they can't afford a cart they can drive their road car on a on a, on a track day car yeah, do you know what i mean yeah. but now because it's so secluded with eastern creek you can't do that do you know what i mean so having yeah. having a kid buy a go-kart even though it's expensive and pricey even at a junior age it does help like myself and yourself learn about the road do you know what i mean like yeah. taking less and less fun out of people driving creates just a, a stopgap really yeah and I, I look i think they sh the the government should be kind of uh, putting more concentration um, and thought into having Wakefield um, stay open mm. and creating opportunities to for people to to um, learn de defensive driving or, or you know because you know when you go and get your motorcycle mm. license you've got to go do a course yeah you know you've got to go and ride a bike physically and do a course and you get your certificate to go into the RMS or whatever it is yeah and get your license. I mean, I think that should be essential for car car licenses as well. Yeah, and you know what, Wakefield would have been ideal for something like that. You mm. know, during the week, um, it doesn't have to be noisy. Yeah, um, <laughs> being electric can be in a Tesla. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, we're not far off having full electric cars for good. Yeah, seriously, it's it's um yeah. What's your take on that though? Having like uh, like going from petrol, I can't get over it. Like I no. I can't see it happening fully in Australia. Look, I think in, in 10 years' time, yeah. we're going to see with fuel prices and everything going up, um, I think we're going to see more, way more. I reckon 50% could potentially be electric in mm. by, within 10 years' time, I, I would think. Yeah. Um, but look, I am I love the smell of fuel. Mm. I, I, I love, you know, smell of, yeah. you know, going or the noise of, of going out to, to the racetrack Hearing, hearing the cars from a distance, you know, it's, yeah. it's... Even your Audi out front, just that nice crispy sound. Yeah, you know I mean, that's, you know, it's, an era, <laughs> it's the end, it's it's the last of an era, right? So yeah. I'm trying to milk it as much as I can. Yeah. So yeah. I will get that loud exhaust. I will have that valve open to listen to every, you yeah. know, loud bit of noise out of that car. Yeah. Because, you know, in a couple of years' time that, you know, it's, it's going to be... Um, you know, not a thing. Yeah. I'll say, well, Brooke was actually saying to me a while ago with... um. With 
the racing and, and the car scene. And she was like to me, oh, you know, what's going to happen in 10 years, which is what you just touched on. I said, hey, this is my hot take on it. They're going to have the hybrid V6 thing going on because Formula One, from what I remember reading, is they were going to, I think they approached with Formula E to eventually merge. And then Formula One, Formula One told them, no, that's not the way because I think there's just not enough, as you said, even with like your business, there's not enough resources out there to, to contain that that just that energy electrical thing yeah to com- to accommodate it yeah, yeah. i think that yeah. we've also said there's like a big picture as well like these a lot of people just want to kill it all but who affords to just dump their car and buy a tesla there's yeah. that question where do you put these cars that we're all going to like get rid of that's the other question where does yeah. that rubbish go mm. and then there's questions around um, we've been talking about the batteries apparently like how much is like having to be mined to create these batteries is the other question and is that counterintuitive to actually being less pollute you know causing less pollution yeah there's also there's <clears throat> questions i think dan also told me that the fiery said they can't put them out if they light on fire yeah. have you yeah. seen those for, videos for online? 48 hours yeah for 48 yeah. hours yeah they, they well i remember seeing some some um some i don't know if it was a video or an article yeah, yeah, yeah. you can't you can't attend to that you can't attend to the car for 48 hours you can't move the car for 48 hours what happens if someone's trapped in there well, no, you can, I guess, get, get them the, out. try and get them out. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and I guess if it does come to that, you've got to do whatever you can. But, yeah, um, yeah apparently you've got to leave the car there for 48 hours um, because of the battery catching light again or something like that. So it like can't that. move at all? No. So what happens if it was, like, stuck on the harbour bridge That's here? That's what I mean. I, I, don't, <laughs> I don't understand. Yeah. I don't know the answer to That's it. A, I didn't realise that. <laughs> I don't know how, yeah. how, um, how real that is yeah. in terms of leaving it stationary there for 48 hours, but... It's um, but look, yesterday uh, I was just driving and I'm going. I, I just looking out the window as I'm driving, noticing Tesla, Tesla, yeah, Tesla. Yeah, it's true. Mm. Yeah, and and that's just you. I didn't notice that last year. Yeah, mm. but now because of everything inflating and so on, it's just becoming so common. Yeah, there's yeah. a shift. Yeah, and yeah. and you know what? If you do your math right, it apparently costs like eight to twelve dollars uh, f- per four five hundred kilometers. Mm. Jesus. Which is nothing. Yeah, right. We're just you know? missing the infrastructure at the moment to, mm. to charge yeah. these things. Yeah. We've seen some interesting things on the northern beaches. For others listening, we might not have seen people. And maybe other areas you're seeing this. There's someone I remember in Manly had the cords going from their house down through the front yard, across the street and over oh, to I their did car. See that. Yeah, like, yeah, oh I saw my that. God, what are you <laughs> yeah. doing? And then there's like the power thing in the middle near a puddle yeah, yeah. and you're just watching it going, oh, okay, we need to sort this out, guys. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Yeah. We need I mean, you charging stations on the street. <laughs> yeah, you can't go with a gallon of electricity, can yeah, you? Yeah, no. Yeah. So <laughs> unless I did see you – Pretty clever. Yeah. I, had, I saw a video of a guy with a trailer and a generator on the back. Oh, there you go. So, yeah. you know, oh. charge as you go. Fill of, full of, fill, filled with gasoline. Yeah, that's yeah. it. <laughs> filled with gasoline. Defeats the purpose. Yeah, yeah. Like, keeps him going. Yeah. yeah. Well, you, But you, obviously, in the Smash Repairs business, surely Subaru and whatnot will be telling you what's coming ahead. Yeah, yeah. Look, we... we get updated with um, with all the latest technology and, and diagnostics and everything like that. So we get informed and we actually do um, – we, we go out to um, – to these classes as well, whenever they whenever they have something new, mm. so they'll they'll invite us. So um, someone from from within our office will um, go and be taught all the new stuff. Yeah, how big is your actual like business? Like, how many people do you actually have staff working there right now? I uh, probably have about twenty four people. Um, yeah, yeah full time. So uh, yeah, f- fair few people. Yeah, and um, we. Uh, our premises is over three, three and a half thousand squares. Mm. So yeah, and we we still struggle for parking. Mm. So it's it, it is becoming a lot more demanding. Um, so it's yeah, it keeps us really busy. So yeah, and that's why you say sometimes you're worn out <laughs> going yeah. from work to being a dad, and that's it. Up. It all catches up with you. And sometimes I'm like, oh, you know, if I'd stayed in motorsport, would it, would I have gone that bit further? I don't know. Yeah, but um, probably probably not. <laughs> yeah, but um, you know, I I don't doubt myself. Yeah, as a driver, mm. but um, you know, I, I have put my mind towards mm. what I think in my mind is going to help me succeed in life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you were also saying with your f- like, sorry, I'll go back a bit. You you we were talking about a bit about your Formula Three days. Yeah. Um, you went from like the Subaru and all that type of thing to the Formula Three. 
how is that experience for like a driver who's who's just listening who might not ever get to experience that compared to like jumping because most of them now is what Brooke even says to me sometimes oh you hardly get any time because you're an open wheel car yeah, uh, yeah to a tin top so everyone gets to most most people who are in racing you get to afford it can experience a tin top but for people who can't afford to hop in an open wheeler formula three car can you explain just changing from like a tin top to an f3 car look it, it's so different mm. yes I mean, at the end of the day, the, the characteristics of each car is, is, is so different to one another. Mm. Um, it's, it, it's like you can't compare them. Mm. But, you know, as a driver, if you go out there and you, you know, you, you put your mind to it, mm. it's got four wheels, you just got to adapt to the car. Yeah. You know, you, you, I guess experience will give you that, you know, that, that, that feeling of, of how to control the car. Mm. So it's just time, but you just got to put your mind to it and, and not be afraid and just do it. Just yeah. do it. I, th- I don't think there's any other word I can... Yeah. Nike's got it down pat. Just yeah. do it. Want to hear more? Each week we will share the hottest clips from our guest interviews on YouTube. But to hear the full episode, make sure to subscribe or follow us on your favourite podcast platform. 